Let's now travel to Saudi Arabia and learn about the big pivot to domestic tourism there and how that prepares the kingdom for the future. Please welcome Muzamil E. Hussein, Executive Vice President, Consumer Travel, Sierra Group. Hi, Muzamil. Hi, Sue. You. How are you? You again. How are you? Very good. Very good. Thank you. Yourself? Excellent. Well, excellent. You know, trying to uh, keep it together and keep us all connected with great conversation, which I hope we're going to have today. Um, you know, so really, you've really had to make this big pivot to domestic tourism like everybody else. You know, tell us what you did to move the business completely domestic. Um, yeah, I think we, we focused on a, a few areas. Um, the first was uh, making sure we have the right infrastructure in place uh, and products and services around the kingdom to provide uh, for our customers. Uh, that required us uh, going out and contracting and sourcing with a number of hotels that we maybe typically wouldn't have contracted with, hotel apartments, uh, some other types of alternative accommodation in certain cities that uh, massive growth happened over the last few months. The second piece was developing and finding the right partners to provide uh, more than just a hotel or a flight, actually uh, alternative activities, transfers, car rentals, um, uh, experiences for people to explore the kingdom. So for example, we've signed with uh, one of a local SME tour operator provides adventure activities, uh, hiking trips, kayaking trips around Saudi Arabia. Another example is we are uh, partnering with the, the Red Sea Cruise Company, to which is uh, many of you have heard that Saudi Arabia has launched a cru luxury cruise over the last two months. And it's been great, tremendous success, although there were some uh, initial hiccups or worries about the whole process uh, with the, the, the stigma of doing a cruise during COVID. But the number of the, the ministry health procedures worked really well. And we're seeing great interest around the cruise lines in Saudi Arabia. So it's about working with all of the ecosystem of the country to build out these uh, products and services. Yeah, I mean, it's it's amazing that uh, I bet you found out things that you didn't know that Saudi Arabia had, right? Because in the past, it was kind of more focused on, on, uh, on outbound and then bringing inbound. And suddenly, you know, this cruise product, for example, I've been seeing so much about it and, and hearing really good things about it. So... What was for you uh, the most unexpected discovery that you made about Saudi Arabia? Uh, I think that there, there's, um, it's this, I would say it's the second and third tier areas of the country. So a lot of people know the major cities, they know what to do. But if you look at some of the, the islands uh, on the Red Sea, uh, or you look at some of the, uh, uh, the, the scuba diving and the kayaking, the, the beauty of the, of, the, of the water and the ability, ability of actually feeling like you're in the Maldives, for example, was something that I, I couldn't imagine. But we've seen great interest there, um, a lot of uh, growth, a lot of uh, Saudi consumers traveling to these parts of the country and really exploring it for themselves. Yeah, you know, I mean, I, I, am, I tend to see things really positively. And I just feel like with this time, I mean, you know, Saudi Arabia had this sort of grand plan to bring in a lot of inbound. But Maybe your infrastructure wasn't really ready, you know, but now, I mean, gosh, you know, the, the heavy lifting that you've done to build up product and having, you know, uh, your own citizens discover your own country, it's going to build you so much better for the future when, when travelers can come in. Uh, definitely. There's, I mean, there's still a lot of work to do. Uh, I think many of, uh, of us have read about the, grand, the, the ambitious plans around tourism development uh, in Saudi Arabia and products and, and services. Uh, we're continuing. I think one of the key things that need to continue to develop is the human capital as well. So making sure that uh, people are trained. We have the infrastructure around trained tourism guides, trained tour guides, trained uh, uh, health and safety certified uh, providers to, to support the inbound market. And during this time, we've continued to also work with the Ministry of Tourism and other bodies to develop human capital, uh, yeah. support the inbound. So it's not only the physical infrastructure, but the human capital as well is going to be really, really critical to the success of welcoming inbound into Saudi as well. Yeah, totally. I mean, uh, you know, the talent is uh, so important, right? The software. So, you know, in line with product, which you also built, and we heard from my real trip too, you know, how they went from 600 to 10,000 products in, in a few months. So you've also really had to scale on your product and your content. You also had to work in marketing. So what channels worked better than others, you know, given that Saudi is a very social market? So 
what channel really worked well for the Saudi Arabia market? Yeah, so I think the, the key, the key um, thing about domestic, and you mentioned it earlier, so is it's about education of, of, of the citizens about what there, what there are to do in the country. And with that, uh, video was very relevant. So we used a lot of self-generated content. We did a lot of social, as you said, but in a different way. So not just posting videos, but actually we did a lot of live Instagram, session, uh, Instagram sessions. We did a lot of Snapchat clips. Uh, YouTube continues to be heavy. So very social, leveraging both our organic channels as well as um, uh, as paid channels. But more importantly, it's about education. So the message was different and also creating interest. And we also heavily relied on our WhatsApp channel, not as a marketing tool, but as an awareness tool. So we have uh, you know a lot of uh, bots that we use on WhatsApp when our customers engage with us, and we provide them a very easy access to understand what there are activities or packages uh, to do in Saudi Arabia through WhatsApp. Okay, so we have a question for you from the audience. Uh, it goes, uh, religious Umrah is a large source of inbound traffic. How realistic is the timeline of January 1st, 2021 to open borders to international Umrah traffic? Um, that, uh, so they've recently announced for the past few days that opening Umrah in a limited capacity for domestic uh, residents and citizens. Um, the international um, uh, announcement has not been yet finalized at the actual day. What, what the January 1st announcement was around outbound travel from Saudi Arabia and inbound okay. into Saudi, but inbound for the purpose of religious tourism, the procedures are not yet finalized. There's a, a lot of great infrastructure and technology that's been built by the ministry to, to facilitate large scale. Uh, that's being piloted and tested over the next few weeks. Actually, next week it will open for 6,000 people a day, and then within two weeks after that for 40,000. But uh, is it, will it be January 1st or later? I don't think that's been yet finalized. Right. January 1st so, will allow inbound tourists, but for religious purposes, not yet confirmed. Okay. So everybody's, you know, all of us have kind of learned really big lessons during this big pivot or this big time, right? So what, what have you learned during this, uh, you know, big pivot? about the Saudi yeah, customers think, or yeah, your I business? Said, I think very similar, I think, in many places. But the, the first thing that I learned is we actually, especially in this region, the, the passion for travel is extremely resilient. Even during this period of, of no travel, borders locked, people stuck in homes, they were searching for travel, they were talking about travel, they were thinking about where to go, they were engaging with us around travel. So that, that's been a really strong learning that we need to continue to, to, to capitalize on. The second has been around obviously uh, every business has done this uh, and to be successful is being very agile and flexible innovative what i mean by that is every day things are changing new opportunities are coming up whether that's in domestic whether that's in helping to send people home facilitate more travel borders are opening and closing so we as a as an industry we need to be more flexible we, we you know people think of travel or air as obviously very asset heavy asset intensive takes a long time to move the needle, but as an industry, we need to be more flexible and, and agile and adaptive uh, because the consumer behavior continues to be that. So in, right. in domestic, for example, the, the last minute bookings massively shot up. The market wasn't prepared for that because hotels and some of these cities weren't prepared for a huge influx in the last minute. They were more staggered demand. So you had bookouts, but to continue to educate and work together with, as a market to, to ensure flexibility as the customer right. demand. Uh, and, 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 you know, all your efforts have really paid off, right? And because the results coming out, like, you know, July and August were your best months ever. So, you know, you, you really, uh, you know, have, have uh, succeeded in building up the yeah, business. We've been, we've been business. Uh, you know, very fortunate uh, as well with uh, a lot of uh, campaigns that happen at a, at a country level around posting of domestic. But yes, for our for domestic, Ju July and August were our best months ever. Uh, we're continuing to to push our omni-channel strategy and transformation. Our our retail stores in these cities are continuing to provide advice and services across all channels. Um, certain cities had 400, 500, 100 percent growth year on year, especially these untapped areas where people didn't know and they finally got a chance to explore. So we're very excited about domestic, uh, both uh, for the domestic consumer and traveler, but also for inbound uh, when it opens. Okay, so Muzami, last question. When you can travel again outside, uh, you know, your region, where are you going to go? Uh, I would go to the Maldives. 
enjoy a relaxing time in an isolated island for a while. Well, Maldives is open for international yes. travel. So we'll see you there. Okay. Thank, thank you, you so very much. much. Thank you thank so much for joining us. Uh, the Sierra Group will be running a workshop uh, on September 29th, 2 p.m. in Singapore time. Uh, just before we kick off tomorrow, actually. So please visit their virtual lounge uh, to learn more about this destination that will surely rewrite travel with its ambitions for tourism. So thank you, Muzamil.